Okay. <coughs> Sorry that. Okay, folks, we're looking at mathematics test set two, paper one. Please, please make sure everybody's microphones are switched off. Everybody, please, until I call you and then you can come in and join me on the question. It just reduces all the background noise. So we're looking at an exam ninja, SATS paper, set two, paper one. So this is the paper that you sh uh, students should have done before the lesson. Uh, it is a reasoning paper, 40 marks, 45 minutes. Let's get ourselves started. Okay. So uh, let's have Minal read question number one for me, please. Okay, no problem. Uh, right, let's have uh, Ariana join me on question number one, please. Um, circle the numbers but have the same value. Okay, circle all the numbers that have the same value. So here that means equivalent to each other. So let's have a look. So which one do you think are equivalent to each other? Um, 0 0.25 is equivalent to a quarter. Okay. Excellent. Those two are equivalent because 0 0.25 is a quarter and a quarter is obviously a quarter. Now a half, if we change into decimal, will be 0 0.5. Three quarters, if we change into decimal, will be 0 0.75. And a fifth, if we change into decimal, would be what? No point. Um, Do you know? Five. 0.2. And eight um, tenths would be no point. Eight. Um, eight. So we can see that the other four fractions have decimal uh, equivalents which are not uh, equal to each other. Now a quarter is 0 0.25, so these will then match. So that's why it's correct. Question number two, keep on reading, Ariana. On how to stay over the year, these temperatures are recorded. Okay, uh, so you've got Bristol, Birmingham, London, Glasgow, Liverpool. Temperatures on the right-hand side. And the question is, what is the median temperature okay, what is the median so what does the word median mean or what's it sound um, like so does it mean like the middle yeah one. Median is the middle value but it's the middle value after you um, order the numbers so it's not just the middle number in the data set that you see they just grab the middle number do you order the data set the numbers Okay, so have you ordered, what was your answer for this, for number two? Um, From your work that you've done? I didn't do a question. Okay, this was supposed to be a pre-class test. Okay, so you're the second student who hasn't done the test paper before the lesson. So this is not supposed to be me going through the paper with uh, it's supposed to be me going through the paper after you've done the paper. So is there any particular reason why the paper hasn't been done? Okay, what is the median temperature? So we said the median temperature is the middle value after you order the numbers. So uh, Ariana, like, look at the question. Give me the numbers in order now, please. Um, it'll go 33. So you, if you want to start, for example, with the smallest for me first, so you start with the large, which is not a problem. But we just normally start from the smallest to the largest. The middle will be the same whether you do either way. But just out of preference, we normally do smallest to largest, but largest to smallest will give you the same result, identical. So that's just our personal preference goal. So the first lowest number is 27 then. Then I'll go 28. Then you go 28 then? 30. And then? 32 and then 33. 32 and then 33. How many values do we have? Five. And which is the middle value out of five values? Uh, 30. The third value. Okay, so you're going to have these two uh, coming in towards the middle. So there's your median temperature. Okay. Right. Next question. So carry on. Read. Raj, can I just see the first question? The first question's right there. Okay. Yes. While you look at the first question, Ariana, uh, read the, the next part of the question, please. 
Uh, what is the mean temperature? Okay, what is the mean temperature? So we're looking at words now. So the word median, you said to me, meant the middle value after you order numbers. So we have another now, another word now. What um, is the mean? Is, is it when you add all the numbers together? So add up all the values. And then? Um, then you divide by the? The number of? Values. Yeah. Lovely. So what numbers do we need to add up? Uh, 30, 32, 33, 27, 28. Okay, let me just grab them for the moment. I'm going to grab them. I don't know if you can see that little there. Copy, paste. Okay, so I'll just copy the numbers up there for the moment so it's nice out of the way. We can add them up here. Otherwise, we'll add them up and crash into my, what my, what I've been annotating. So add them up for me, please, now, in the normal traditional way, starting from the right hand side. So go on. Um, um, you have 7 plus 3, which is 10, 8 plus 2, which is 10, and 20. Okay, so you got 10, 20. Okay, lovely. So you got 20 here. Carry on the next bit. And then 3 next plus column. 3 is 9, plus 3 is 12, plus 2 is 15. So you got 9 at the top, plus the 4 is 13. Add the 2 is? Uh, 15. Lovely. So, so far, if you want to work out the mean, we know the total of all the data values is 150. How many data values did you have? Five. Five. So 150 divided by five is? 30. 30. Okay, now don't forget when you're doing your question in the exam, don't leave your answer here. Always finish off by putting the answer in the answer box. It's important. Okay, All right, thank you for that, Ariana. Okay, question number three. Okay, let's have Mahnoor, please. It says, look at this diagram, and it's, it's got a big notice here. Okay, what does this wording here mean, not to scale? What does that mean? You're not supposed to scale it. Okay, the not to scale, say that again, what does it mean? You're not supposed to scale it. Okay, no, it, it's not quite that. The word not to scale means it's not drawn accurately. So the 40 degrees that they've shown in the diagram isn't necessarily 40 degrees. They're trying to, they've given us like a, a very neat sketch uh, of uh, the, the situation. So they, they want you to measure the X, they want you to calculate the X from using a, so if you look at the keyword here, the keyword here means calculate. They didn't say measure, because if you had measure, then it would be, it would need to be drawn to scale. It need to be drawn accurately. Okay, so the not to scale means don't start me measuring on the diagram using your protractor to measure the angle X, you'll get the answer most likely wrong. They want you to calculate it using principles of geometry. So, what principle do we use to work out the value x here in this case? What do you, what do we know about a the angles at a point on a straight line? What do we know about that? Um, that would be one hundred and eighty. Okay, lovely. So we say the angle sum at a point on a straight line is always 180. So what you're saying here is that 40 degrees at the x degrees is 180. So how would you work out what the x is now then? Well, you know you have 40 percent is 180 so 40 degrees back. remember that what symbols for degrees here 40 degrees add x degrees is 180 so how do you work out the x in that situation um well you have 180 degrees and half of 80 is 40 and you still have the entire 100 so you would have 100 140 degrees add 40 degrees 
Okay, so opposite of adding 40 is? Is, um, <laughs> Minus 40. So we need to do 180 minus the 40. That will give us the missing angle. So what is the missing angle? 140. Okay, lovely. Give me the next question. Um, did you, get, did you um, get a chance to do this paper before the lesson? Yes. Good. Okay. Read number four for me, please. Emily's family go to a cafe and price list is below. Okay, keep on going. Um, so you got coffee, tea, cake, sandwich, soft drink with the prices on the right hand side. Okay, good. Emily walks up to the counter and says, We would like two coffees, two soft drinks, two sandwiches and a cake please. How much has Emily spent at the cafe? So what do we need to do for this question then? So two um, coffees, how much is the coffee? The coffee is one pound. So how much is two coffees? Two pound. And how much is one soft drink? 50p. And how much is uh, two, cof uh, two soft drinks? One pound. Okay, and how much uh, is, uh, is the cost of one sandwich? Two pound. And the cost of three sandwiches? Six pound. Okay, and how much is the cost of a cake? Um, um, a cake is one pound fifty. Okay, what do we do with all these, uh, these totals? We so with all these values? And you can add them. Okay, so when you say you can add them, that's exactly what we do, we have to add them. We have to add them all up until we get our answer. So we have zero, 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 starting from this side. Zero add five add zero add zero is five. Two add one is three. Three add one is four. Four add the six will give you 10. So how much did it cost them all together? 10 pound 50 pence. Say they show you're working. So uh, what I'm going to do, I'm going to cheat a bit because I can. Uh, I'm going to do this. I'm going to copy it. I'm going to paste it and I'm going to make it nice and small. There you go. I've got my calculations all in there now. Okay, next part of the question, read please. Um, a cafe charges 10% service charge. And Emily pays with the £20 note. How much change does she receive? Okay, so she's got to pay 10%. So we've been doing percentages recently. So hopefully that should be a doddle for you now. So what do we need to work out the 10% off? Um, we need to work out the 10% of a £20 note. Ooh, not 10% of £20 note. What is... She needs to pay 10% service charge. Service charge is based on what? What are they going to charge you 10% of? The bill. They're going to charge you 10% of what value? Of £10.50. That's right. It's not 10% of what you pay with. It's 10% of the bill. So the bill is £10.50. So they're going to charge you 10% of that. So that's the calculation that you need to work out. 10% of £10.50. So can you give me the method for that, please? So to do 10%, you need to divide it by 10. Because 10% means one tenth. So if you do £10.50 divided by 10, what do you get? Um, if you divide it by 10, you would get it. Um, ten pound five pence. What do you get? One pound fifty p. One pound and five p. The last zero is called an unnecessary zero, even though we copy it down from the top. You don't need it in the final part. So you have to pay one pound and five p in uh, in a service charge. So that's the service charge. That's like like a tax in a sense. That's how much you pay extra. So how much did you uh, cost? So you got £10.50 as the cost of the bill. 
You've got to pay an extra one pound five. So how much is that altogether then? Um, um, eleven pound fifty-five pence. And and what 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 uh, was the the note that you paid with? The twenty pound note. And so you paid altogether eleven pound fifty-five. So you got twenty pound minus eleven pound fifty-five. And what would the answer be? What was your um, answer? Um. Did you do this? Um, did you do the question like this? Oh no. Okay, so twenty pound minus eleven pound. Twenty pound minus eleven pound is nine pound. Nine pound minus fifty five will give you eight pound and forty five. So that is the amount of change that Emily will receive from twenty pound. Done. Okay, thank you for that. Okay. All right, I'm going to do the next question. The numbers in this sequence increase by the same amount every time. Write in the missing numbers. So at the moment, we're going to go from here to there, from here to here, from here to here, from here to here. So we've got to work out what the increment is. We can work out here. So from 51 to 67, we have gone up by 16. Okay, then the box looks a little bit small for me. So I'm just going to write down here outside the box. So for question number five, we are going up in 16s now. So we have to do now 67, add the 16. So 7 and 6 is 13, 6, 7, 8. So that will be 83. Now, if I go backwards, opposite of adding 16, if I reverse the rule, because the rule is plus 16 this way, but if I'm going backwards, I'm going to have to do minus 16. So you have to do 51 minus 16 is the next calculation of you. So 51 minus 16. So we have 11 minus 6 is 5. And 4 minus 1 is 3. So that will give you 35. So 35 goes in this box over here. So remember the direction that you do your rule goes in. If you're going to the right, you're adding 16. If you go backwards, you have to reverse the rule and do minus 16. Okay, question number six. Pick one number from each circle to fill the box above it uh, and make the calculation correct. Mr. Zaki, please help us on this question number six. Go. Uh, so you pick, so you pick so, uh, so one in a sense, number. In a sense, you could think of the question like this. Because these two numbers here have to multiply first, so that will give us one answer. So I'll put in brackets so you can focus that. That will give us an orange answer. And then we have to minus what the next bit is. So this question is really a question of one number minus another number gives us 30. So this, this first box is a number. Then we minus the next number. Then it gives us 30. So we're looking for two numbers that take away to give us 30 as like an overall picture. So we're going to have to kind of make these numbers up so it makes sense. Okay, now, right. So Zaki, what was your what were your particular values that you chose? You got to pick one number from each circle. So I take it there's a circle here. Looks like the circle hasn't printed. That's all. So you got to pick one number from here that goes in here, one number that goes in here, and one number that goes in there. So what did you pick? Chose nine times by eight. Okay, so first of all, you chose nine times by, what's nine times by eight? 72. 72. And then how much did you have to take away to get to 30? 42. Fantastic. So 72 minus 42 gives us the desired 30 that we need. Fantastic. Lovely. Well done. Okay, stay there, Mr. Zaki. Okay, question number seven, look at this graph. Okay, this is called a distance time graph. The reason why it's called a distance time graph because the vertical axis is distance and the horizontal axis is time. Okay, read, Zaki. Emily goes on a bike ride. She started at 11 a.m. and had a break for lunch. <clears throat> Carry on. How far did Emily cycle after lunch? How far did Emily cycle after lunch? 
Okay, so Emily goes on a bike ride, so we can look at the, we can track it. So she starts here, she goes away, and she, how many kilometers does she do before she has a break? This kilometers. is the part that she has a break, because she's not doing anything. This part's flat. So this part here is the part that she's having a break. Okay, and then, then this part here, this part here is after the break. And the question was, how far did Emily cycle after lunch? So when she when she had a break, how far had she gone? Twenty kilometers. No, when she started the break, how far had she gone? Ten kilometers. Ten kilometers. And then after the break, she cycled everything. All of this distance here. Until she got to this distance here. So what's that distance? So how many kilometers did she do by the end of the ride? 35 kilometers. 35 kilometers. 30, 40, yeah, 35 looks good. So how far is she traveled? They want to know how far did she travel in this part here, in this part of the journey. So we know that she got to 35 and she started the journey at 10. So what's the total distance then traveled? 45 kilometers. Are you sure? Because don't forget, when she start after the break, she had already done 10 kilometers. So how much mm. extra did she do between 35 and, and 10? 25 kilometers. 25 kilometers. No. So that's the extra one, so we can even measure it here, look. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25. Done, because we're going up in fives. So we have gone from here to here, that's 25 kilometers going up from 10 to 20, to 35. Okay, excellent. Next part. Read. Read, Zaki. If Emily had cycled, cycled for an hour longer at the end of the day, continue, continuing at the same speed, how much further would she have traveled? Ah. So she's carrying on at the same speed as this. And they want to know how far was she gone in one hour. So we need to have like a breakdown of how far she traveled in an hour. And we could try that by... Okay, let's have a look here. Yeah, green's okay. So we have over here... So at two o'clock, uh, how far she traveled? How far she traveled at two o'clock? 20 kilometers. Okay, and what's two o'clock at another hour? Three o'clock. Three o'clock. Okay, I think that's going to be around about here. I think my line's a bit bent. Okay, lovely. So, how far did she travel in the one hour? Three o'clock. So she's traveled from here to here. What number goes there? Twenty-five. Absolutely. So how far has she traveled then? From twenty to twenty-five, how far is that? Five. Okay, thank you for that help, Aisha. Okay, right, so that's how we can work it out. You could even do it over two hours and divide the distance traveled in. So we will need to work out per hour while she's traveling. So we worked out from here. So this bit here is how much was done in one hour. This is one hour over here. And then that was five kilometers. Okay. Can I do this? Okay. Minel, go. Is that Minel? Uh, okay, Minel. Yes. Go on. So, um, you have to do 186 in a bus stop method. So which one, which part goes outside the bus stop? Six and then 186 goes inside. Okay, go. So six, go, six goes in one zero times, so you write a zero there. And then six goes in 18, three times, so you write a three there. 
Mm-hmm. And six goes in six once. Okay, so remember, when six doesn't go into one, the whole one becomes the remainder. So remember yeah. that technique. So the answer for that is straight and forward, 31. Can you read the next question for me, please? Emily's mom run, runs a shop that sells bicycles. She opens the shop at 9 a.m., but she needs to be there from 8.30 a.m. to ensure it's ready. If it takes her 35 minutes to drive to the shop, what's the latest time she can leave? The answer is 7.55. Okay, so the answer is 7.55, but can you explain to us? Because I did 8.30 minus 30, 30 and then I just did minus 5. So eight, see, if, she, if she takes 35 minutes to drive to the shop and she wants to be there for what time? 8.30? Yeah. So we've got to go 35 minutes before 8.30. Now, if we go back by 30 minutes, what time will we arrive at? 8. And then if we do an extra five minutes to, for the 35, where will we arrive at? 7.55. There we go, lovely. Done. Next part. Um, Amy's mom leaves at this time, but she gets caught up in two traffic jams. The first uh, only lasts five minutes, but the second is twenty-eight minutes. What does what does huh? what, what does she arrive at the shop? Okay, what so, time does she arrive at the shop? So at the moment, <laughs> she was planning to arrive at the shop at what time? Eight so thirty. She's planning to arrive at the shop at eight thirty. Yeah. Yeah. And she left home at what time? 7.55. Okay, so it takes her 35 minutes to drive to the shop. Okay, lovely. So now she's got, how much time has she got? How much time did she have as a buffer to play with uh, here? Uh, 30 minutes. Yes, yeah, she has 30 minutes of, of preparation time. Yeah. Now, and how many minutes is she late all together? Uh, uh, 33. 33 minutes, yeah? Late. Plus 7.55. So, so seven, so she was supposed to arrive there for 8.30, but she's going to arrive 33 minutes late. So 8.30 is the time she normally arrives at the, at the shop, her arrival, because she likes to arrive early. And then yeah. we're going to add another 33 minutes onto that. So the answer is nine. So the answer gives us 8.63 as a rough answer. And then we can translate that into? 9.03. 9.03. And the reason why we can translate that, because we can't have more than 60. Everything over 60 is an hour. So we minus the 60 and add an hour onto there. And that gives us 9.03 a.m. Okay, lovely. Question number 10, please. We is change it, meters into millimeters. So do you yeah. know what the conversion is? Isn't it 1,000? Absolutely. In one meter, we have 1,000 millimeters. You have to do 1,000 divided by um, 314. So we, if we change meters into millimeters, what do we do? You have to do 1,000 divided by... No, 1,000 times. Yeah, yeah. So you, every meter is 1,000 millimeters, 2 meters, 2,000, 3 meters, 3,000. So if you're starting with the big unit, which is, which is here, then to get to the small unit, you have to multiply by a thousand. Yeah. So you are three point one four times by a thousand. So what will that give us? Three thousand one hundred and forty. And how do we do that? I moved it. Move the decimal three point three places, right. and, and the gaps fill it with the zero. Yeah. Okay. Fantastic. Lovely. Uh, okay, right. Okay, thank you for that, uh, Minal. Uh, right, uh, Aisha, please, number 11. Hi. <laughs> yes, hi, Aisha. Come on. So read it. Yes, obviously. Emily's dad runs a coffee shop. One of his morning tasks is to make enough chicken sandwiches to f feed his lunchtime customers. Each sandwich requires the following. Let's see. Half a half a breast chicken, a quarter a baguette of bread, a half tomato, one tablespoon of mayonnaise, a half 
teaspoon of mustard. Emily's dad prepares 40 sandwiches. How many baguettes of bread does he use? I don't, because, um, what was it? Um, the sandwiches is 40. I put 40 down and the, the baguettes are a quarter. So I don't, a quarter of 40 equals 10 because 40 divided by four is 10. 10 times by one is 10. And we got my answer. Okay, so you got 40 lots of a quarter of a, of a baguette. So 40 lots of a quarter of a baguette gives you 10 full baguettes. So, okay, and the next part? Um, he, he sells out of his chicken sandwiches during, the, during lunch, and he, so he makes 16 more. How many teaspoons of mustard has he used in total throughout the day? So he sells out of his chicken sandwiches during lunch. So, uh, chicken sandwiches. Okay. So he prepares 40 sandwiches and they're obviously they're all chicken sandwiches. So he's got 40 sandwiches. Throughout the whole day. So how many sandwiches do you need to take into consideration for the, for the part, second part of the question, for number 11? I don't 16. Um, I did half of 16 and that's eight. I got the answer eight. You got the answer eight? Yeah. Okay, so for each baguette, how many teaspoons do we need? Each baguette, um... How many teaspoons do we need? Teaspoons of mustard, half. Yeah, because they're talking about teaspoons of mustard, aren't they? Yeah, half. So they sold 40, first of all. So 40 times by a half is equal to what? 20. 20 teaspoons. And then you have another 16 more that he made. And they will also need half a teaspoon each, which will give us what? How many teaspoons is that? Eight. So what's 20 at eight? 28. 28. Okay, so you need 28 teaspoons of mustard. Okay. Read number 12. For this one, for this one, we don't have a protector. Okay. All right. So that's going to be a little bit harder if you don't have a protector for that one. But I'm going to have to start, uh, maybe I'll have to go. Uh, it says using a protector, estimate what percentage children like salt and vinegar the most. Okay. Right, so if most of you put your hands up if you had a ch ch had a protractor at home and was able to do the question. Okay, no hands. All right, question number 12. Uh, I don't have a protractor that I can use actually on screen either to do that question. Mm -hmm. So we're going to possibly skip that question for now and we'll jump on to question number 13. Off you go, number 13, please. Hi. Yeah, go on. I'm filling the missing numbers in this multiplication grid. Go on then. Um, two times by six is twelve. The red's done that. Two times by seven is fourteen. Mhm. Mm two times by eight is sixteen. Yeah. Three times by six is eighteen. Mhm. Mm Three times by seven is twenty-one. Twenty-one. Four times by six is twenty-four. Twenty-four. Four times by seven is twenty-eight. Twenty-eight and. Four times by eight is 32. 32. Okay, the 30 is looking a bit funky. Mm -hmm. Sorry, change it. Okay. All right, question number 14. Read. Um, this cube has... Yeah, this cube has... This cube has markings on three of its faces. The cube is trying to look like below. Draw the missing part of its shape. Okay, this one wasn't as easy to... Because you've got to think in 3D in your head that we're turning the shape around and we ending up with that a rectangle, that triangle on the right-hand side being ending up on top. So where would the Q go? So the Q would go over here. So that's what you need to draw. You need to draw a Q with the tail going that way on this side. So that's where your answer should be. Your answer should be in on this face with the Q pointing upwards. So if you've got that right, 
then you can give yourself a tick. Okay. Right, question number 15. Let's have Mahnoor, please. Thank you for that, Aisha. Mahnoor, read the question for me, please, number 15. Okay, you need, you need, to, need to talk a little bit louder. I think maybe you're slightly further away from your microphone because your voice is coming across really tiny, like a little mouse. Number 15. Emily has one pound 46 pence in her pocket. What is the smallest number of coins it could be? Go. So you can um, have a one pound coin? Yeah. And you can have two 20 p Two 20p coins? Two 20p, one 5p and one 1p. One so how many coins would that be? Um, five. What is the largest number of coins it could be? 146. Yeah, because we could use one penny for everything. Lovely. Question number 16, read. Here is the shape in the one centimeter grid. What is the perimeter of shape A? What is the area of shape A? Okay, what does it mean by the perimeter? Um, by the word perimeter, he defines the length. The, it is the length, yeah, but is the length where? Um, around the shape. Around the shape. So let's start from one corner. Let's go all the way across. So how many do we have here? One, two, three, four. Looks like four and a half. One. And then we'll go across by two and a half. And then down by three. Left by one, two, two and a half. Down by one, cross by one, up by two. So I'm going around each side. I'm going around in a clockwise motion. And this one would be three and a half. And the last bit is this last part of the journey here, which is nice and simply just three. Right. Uh, did you, anybody get managed to get a total for that? Anybody? No. Okay, so here's your challenge. I want everybody to add up the, uh, these values that we have on the right hand side and send me the answer in the chat box. Off you go. I'm recording. Okay, folks, right. So if you add up all these values, we're gonna get an answer of a perimeter of 24 centimeters, which is the distance around the shape. Now, the next part's asking us to work out the area. In order for us to work out the area, we need to physically count the number of boxes. Because it's a one centimeter grid, so it'll be one centimeter times by one centimeter, which is one centimeter squared for the area of one box. One by one, okay? So I'm gonna count them now. Count with me, please. One, two, three, four, full size square. That's four centimeters. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22. So I've counted 22 full squares. Now I'm going to change the color of my pen to, yeah, and that, this is now, we have got 22 so far. Okay, so I've got this bit here, which I haven't counted. That's half a square. This bit here, that's also a half a square. So we have now uh, a half and a half. So okay, so we have 22 squares. And then we have another half of a square, another half of a square. These two make one. So that gives us 23 centimeters squared. So whoever got 23 centimeters squared, give yourself a pat on the back. Well done. So the answer here is 23 centimeters. Let's show you're working. Uh, I don't really know what they want. 22 times by a full box and 22 times by half a box. Okay, that's one centimeter squared. That's a half centimeter squared. That equals 22. Okay, and that one equals one. Then we add them up. Hopefully that will give us the working out mark. 
Done. Question number 17. <clears throat> okay, I shall go for it. Um, you need to go a bit down. Oh, here's a number machine. Six times three is 18. 18 times two is 36. Here's another num number machine. Write the missing four numbers. Um, I done, I done the inverse, so I started from the bottom. 12 divided by three equals four. Four times by two is eight. Eight divided by eight is one. And then set one divided by two is 0 0.5. Yeah, or a half. And then I'll check back at it. Lovely. Next question. Is that right? Yeah. Cool. It says, the question number 18 says, draw the reflection of all the shaded shapes. So this shape here gets reflected on the other side of the mirror. So the mirror is actually here. This is your mirror line. Oops, that's a little bit wonky. That's better. So this shape here, oops, let's do a different color. So we're gonna take it from one side to the other side. So this one here is going to the other side here. And this one here on the right will be over here on the left. Okay. This one here on the left will be touching the mirror on the right. Okay. Now we have another one which is touching here on this side. And that will be on this side. And this one will be over there. And there you go. That's your answer. So you need to draw this one, this one, this one, this one, and this one to get one mark. If you get any of them in the wrong order or in the wrong place, and you lose the full mark, you get nothing. Okay, question number 19. We need to come to an end here. Okay, uh, question number 19. Let's have uh, Minal. Question number 19. Let's go. So, um, one hole is bigger than 0 0.8. So, so one hole is bigger than 0 0.8. So, if I'm reading from here to there, that's the sign I need to put in. Yes? Yeah. And, and then, hole is and then equal one hole is what? Equal. Compared to 1.0? Equal. Equals. So we're reading it from the middle to the right. We're reading right and we're reading to the left. So now, so, okay. it's, so six, six eighths, if I read it from the middle to the left, is it bigger than three quarters, the same, less or more? What is it? Equal. Equal. Start back from the middle and read to the right now. Is six eighths bigger, smaller, or what than eight six? It's... Um, smaller, because six eighths is less than one. And eight six is greater than one. So then by them switching the numbers upside down, they made the number more than one. Next, start from here. Is a half uh, bigger than 55 or less? Um, less. Half is less. You put the less than sign. Half is less than 55. You're reading from right to left. Now we're reading from left to right. Is a half, half bigger than 0.45 or less? Bigger. Yeah. Excellent. Let's start from the middle. Four fifths, just read it to the left. Is four fifths bigger than 0.45, smaller or equal? It's um, 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 definitely smaller, bigger. Bigger, because four fifths is 0 0.8. 0 0.80 is bigger than 0.45. Now let's read from the middle to the right. Four fifths again is 0 0.8. Is um, that bigger than 0.55? It's bigger. It's bigger. <sighs> Done. Last I question. think this is the last question. After you carry on. Okay, here is a Venn diagram for sorting numbers. Um, put the following numbers in the diagram. Four will go on multiples of two. Ten will go in multiples of, um, in the middle. Twenty-five okay. multiples of five. Okay. Seventy-three would go in multiples of nothing. So where does it go then? Outside. Outside the circle, but inside the rectangle. Then? Uh, 250 would go in the middle. Because it's both of them. And then it's a multiple of five. Um, 730 would go in the middle too. Fantastic. And Okay, so uh, I'm going to stop the video here. That's the end of that paper. 
And as you can see, we've done lots and lots of work on that sad style paper with lots and lots of working out. We did have to miss one question out because we never had the, nobody had the right equipment to measure it. So we've done all the bits that we can do. I've done lots and lots of work and lots and lots of maths. So I'm going to stop the video here and get the results of everybody.